for coming today to Coffee and Conversation. Um, we have today Marjorie Turner Holman, who actually became highly recommended um, from our Kel friend Kelly Sipe, who presented last week on Get On Your Feet, our Drums Alive teacher. So they're in a networking group together, and she thought we'd be interested in hearing about easy walks in Massachusetts, particularly around this area, and we are. What a nice group we have today. So I'm going to turn it over to Marjorie. Uh, thank you. Oh, thank you so much, Debbie. All right, can everyone hear me? I've got a mask that's for my family. And is everyone able to hear me OK? Great. Because we're going to be talking about easy walks. And the first thing that people often ask is, what's an easy walk? And I try to explain it as simply as I can, and that means not too many roots, not too many rocks, relatively level, firm footing with something of interest along the way. So that doesn't mean that it's all paved. It doesn't mean that it's all stone dust. It means there's lots of different options. And I'm going to give you just a smattering of some of the available places. I'll just give you a picture from many of the different places. And then I did bring some books and Walpole is in one of them, surrounding towns. The books that I've written, I call hyper-local. That means you go from one town to the next, all these contiguous towns. And at this point, the books that I've written have 36 contiguous towns from where I live in Bellingham, out to the Blackstone Valley, here to the Upper Charles in Medfield area, you're in the Neponset River watershed. So it's all about watersheds and where those towns are, because the rivers are a, a wonderful part of this. So let's get started. And the first one, of course, I want to start in Walpole. I'm sure you all know Bird Park in East Walpole. My granddaughter found a perfect place to hang out there. <laughs> and then I took her over to the little pond. And I don't, do any of you remember when the, the East Walpole Pond, the fish pond here, was the swimming pool? Yes. You do. All right, because that was actually a stream going into the Neponset River, and it had a cement bottom. I think it had a fountain. I'm not sure. But there's one other like that in Franklin as well. Mine Brook goes right through where they had another cemented swimming pool where a brook ran through. Both of those are no longer where you get swimming lessons, but I think it's a very cool thing. It was a creative way to give people recreation and swimming lessons. So that was where the pool was. Uh, Bird Park has um, cement walkways. There's some wooded walkways. It's now overseen by the trustees of the reservations, and they have all sorts of programs there. But I've, uh, I've seen people with not quite walkers. They're little, probably four-wheel bikes. It's not the ideal place for biking, but it is definitely a place for walking and definitely qualifies as an easy walk. Any of you know Adam's Farm? Yep. What a beautiful, beautiful resource, relatively new to the town as far as outside walking paths. There's about 700 acres between Adams Farm and there's an adjacent farm. So for people that are looking for l longer walks, I only can go about a mile or two. So some of us don't go that far, but I also like to um, include people who would like to go farther and tell them when those are. So Adams Farm is definitely a place that has options for short, or longer walks. Can you all still hear me? Doing okay? All right. Can you keep the mic a little closer? That's what I was asking. Is that better? better. Great. Okay, thanks for letting me know. Is that better? Yes. Great. All right, we have two sections of town forest in Walpole. The first is probably about 50 yards down from here, right over, uh, there's a parking lot right on South Street. And that was, is it that way? Did we already go by the parking? No. Yeah, well, parking's down there. there. And here. You can take the rail trail right here, mm -hmm. and it goes right out. Oh, my goodness. See the people walking? They're on. walking right here? Yeah. 
Oh my goodness. Yeah. All right, and I'm gonna have to investigate more after. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so you know that the Neponset River comes right through here. Uh, where I live in Bellingham, we've got the Charles River and it's often called the Hidden Charles up that way. It kind of goes behind places. It's not really very obvious. Neponset River does the same. It kind of hides as it goes under 1A, goes back by the, um, by the commuter rail parking. It goes behind, I think, Stop and Shop is that, and then out across, oh, is it Washington Street? I think near, right near uh, Bird Park. But, um, but here is one of the great places to see it. It's got a really nice view, and it's right off of South Street. So that's the view of the Walpole Town Forest. Definitely an easy walk. It's flat, level, wide, not paved. Uh, it's not crushed stone dust. It's a fire road, but very, very walkable, and you get to see the Neponset River. There's another section of the Walpole Town Forest just on the other side of Washington Street, and it also has nice, wide, they're wooded, more like pine needle tracks. They're not paved, it's not crushed stone dust, but very walkable. And it's got this bridge that takes you over to Jarvis Farm. And that is accessed off Common Street. I believe it was a camp that now is owned by the town. Is that yes. great? Okay, and, and so it's got a beautiful pond I uh, haven't been there a while. Last I was there, were, there were still some camp buildings there. I think it's still in process of development. Is that, is that accurate from local people? Yeah, but it's a lovely place to be outdoors. Uh, Moose Hill Audubon is not far at all, right ne next to East Walpole. And Mo Moose Hill was the very first Mass Audubon property of all the properties that are run by Mass Audubon in the state. So there are boardwalks, there are easy walks, there are some very challenging walks. And one of the places that's Moose Hill, you can get a view of the stadium. It's a little more challenging to get there, so it's not, it's not necessarily an easy walk there, but it's one of the goals that people, people love views. I love views. So it's nice to be able to get that. So that's Moose Hill Audubon. But then just down on the same street is Moose Hill Farm. That's trustees of the reservation. Different organizations, a, ha a quarter mile apart. Sometimes people don't even realize one or the other. They've got separate websites. They've got separate people that are following them. So that's what I try to do is what town are you in what's there to be able to kind of cross over between all the different organizations that run these amazing properties. So that's um, trustees of the reservation right on Moose Hill Road, another wonderful easy walk. There's, there's cows there in the field. There are woodland trails. Some of it's easy, some of it is not and the closer to the parking lot is very easy walking as you get into more wooded trails and along the power lines, it's a little more challenging. Am I still doing okay with you all? Great. All right, Foxborough, another very, very close by town. I already just rode, rode by on my way up Route 1, uh, the Lane Family Homestead. It goes right along the Neponset Reservoir, and that's the headwaters of the Neponset River. Uh, it's North Street, so when you're going to the stadium, North Street is right along Route 1, one mile down. There's really nice parking. Foxborough's developed everything right there fairly recently, just in the last three or four years. And it's now a wonderful place to visit. They've got a story walk for you to bring your grandchildren or enjoy for yourself. And beautiful, beautiful views of the reservoir. It's not paved, it's not stone dust, it's a dirt track, but it's really quite wide. I would call it a cart path 
and uh, very walkable. I didn't bring my hiking poles there in the car, but a lot of times that's what makes the difference for me to be able to get out on trails that aren't paved or stone dust. And I would encourage you, if you're feeling like I've got balance issues or not, think about getting some hiking poles. There are lots of kinds and they're on the internet. Um, sports shops will have them. They're ski poles, but they don't have the little baskets. And they're a great asset for being able to make it so you can say yes to things that otherwise you might feel are out of reach. I need hiking poles when I go to the Lane Homestead. The Cranberry Bog, right behind Bass Pro Shop. Yep. It's a lovely loop. The last part of it is a little hilly and you've got nice views of a working Cranberry Bog. There's bathrooms at Bass Pro Shop. <laughs> <laughs> I know, there's mostly not, mostly not, but Bass Pro Shop, when the store is open, they're right at the back of the store, which is right by the trailhead. So I always like to tell people when there are bathrooms. It's a rarity, but you take what you can get. And then Foxborough State Forest. There are some easy paths. The CCC, any of you remember learning about the Civilian Conservation Corps from the 1930s, back with in the midst of the Depression? All over the state, young men were deployed to these outdoor locations, built little housing for them, meeting places, and they put young men to work who could then send their money home to their families. They built roads, and that's part of what you see here at Foxboro State Forest. They ma made fire roads, and they also built water holes, because this was all about fire suppression and making it so that fire control. So any of these state forests, they're going to have ponds that the CCC workers built. And that's kind of a fun thing to look at. The Foxborough State Forest, they actually label them. Other places, they don't necessarily, but once you start learning what they look like, then you can start finding them. It's, it's really kind of a fun thing. I see it as a scavenger hunt. <coughs> and then the other direction from you in Walpole is Medfield, and a wonderful property that is now open to the public is well, the former Medfield State Hospital. The buildings are still there. There is a track along the river, and that's the Charles River, that is very walkable. There is a slope down to it, but then it's really a fire road going along the river, and you can see uh, the Charles River flowing right through there. People canoe there. It's walkable, except if it's flooded which it might be, it's been a little dry this spring. But if it's <laughs> flooded, you might not be able to. But otherwise, it's a great accessible place. And if you haven't been over, I would encourage you to explore it. Medfield also has Noon Hill. And this is another trustees of the reservation property. Some of it is easy. The climb up to the view, especially if there's ice. Ask me how I know. Um, is, is not an easy walk at all. Sometimes you don't make it to the top, but uh, it's a wonderful view. And again, this is another way that you can see the stadium in the distance, but there's lots of other things to see as well. So Noon Hill is a trustee's property. So a lot of times you can just find information on these websites for the different organizations. But again, they're all Look, they're all compiled by different organizations. Yes? Uh, trustees' properties are open to the public. If you're a member, typically you're going to get in for free. And if you're not a member, then there is a charge. Certain, especially with the pandemic, things got a lot more crowded. And so the trustees moved to not every place, but a lot of them require reservations. So you actually pay uh, beforehand. Our family um, supports these organizations because it's, that's what 
if they didn't do the work they did, I'd have no place to tell you about. So, um, you know, and so that's, that's an investment in our, in our state, in what's available for people. And yes, everyone benefits, but. Yes. If you go in by bike, probably not, but yes. Yeah, if you're in walking distance or biking distance, right. Uh, but for parking, yes, they kept it. It was, you all remember from the pandemic, people had no place to go but outside and trails became dangerously overcrowded with, with the infections. So that's really abated but I think these organizations have found it's a useful thing to make things not so crowded. Stony Brook, yet another, you know, you have so many wonderful places right near where you are. Stony Brook is a, another Mass Audubon property. Um, and if you're not a member, yes, they do charge, but it's, it's just a, a magical place. Uh, the boardwalk is a wonderful, wonderful wildlife viewing spot. It's pretty handicapped accessible. They have one, one section right by the visitor center that they call an all persons trail. And it is handicapped accessible, crushed stone. And you can see the rope along there. And that is to facilitate people with visual impairment to make it so they can go safely along Give, give a person as much independence as they're able. And uh, there are some signs in Braille. If you don't happen to read Braille, they're not gonna help. But um, I believe they also have audio uh, guides that you can use. You would need to check at the visitor center for that. And also in Norfolk, there's a, a real simple community playground, but they've made it so there's walking trails that are crushed stone dust, wide, very accessible. Uh, it's right on Rockwood Road and uh, 115 and Rockwood Road. So it's, it's very close to Norfolk Center, accessible. I like to point out places like that. They don't have to be big and there's still a place you can get outdoors. And when we were at the Medfield, uh, the Medfield Hospital, right across the river is Rocky Narrows. You're into Sherburne. So Medfield, Sherburne's the next town. Rocky Narrows is yet another trustees of reservation property. There's parking right on 27, and you're not supposed to cross the railroad track. That's where the bigger parking is, but it's limited what you can do. On the other side of the railroad track, there's a sign, and I'm forgetting at the moment the name of the street. It's very limited parking for about five cars, and Sherburn believes in towing people. <laughs> so don't park on the street. <laughs> can just don't do it, because you will get towed. So if the parking lot is full, I always encourage people, have a plan B. Don't just say, I have to go home because I couldn't get in where I wanted to go. Uh, especially with the pandemic and how crowded things were, I really urge people, do your homework before, have a plan B. You may be surprised that the other place that you thought of maybe isn't as well known and there won't be anybody there. That's exactly what we found. We went over to Dover to know Annette Noanet, which is a trustee's property, they had parking attendants and were monitoring who was coming in and out. We went a half mile down to their farm and there was nobody there and had a wonderful time. It didn't have the views, but we got outdoors. So have a plan B when you head out and you'll, much, you'll be much less likely to be disappointed. Now, right next to Rocky Narrows is the Sherburn Town Forest. It's actually accessed the same way as uh, Rocky Narrows. But what it does is take you up to the King Philip Overlook. It's actually the most accessible view right in that area on that side of the river. There's, there's another view, Rocky Narrows, which is the 
that's the view that they have, and I think that's what it's called. And it says, danger, don't slip, don't take this. If you, <laughs> it's got all these warning signs. But by going on this town forest side, it's level, it goes up very slowly, and you're going to have a beautiful view without endangering your life. So um, that's why I bring that up. Now, we're, I was still talking about the Charles River because right next door to you in Medfield is the Charles River floodplain. And up in where I live in Bellingham is the hidden Charles. You have to go in little tiny places. Uh, the only access for this spot is off of the athletic fields on High Street in Bellingham. You can't even know that it's there until you walk a half mile through a wooded trail, and then it's like your little private secret place by the river. Um, you know, the Charles has a number of places like that. There's some in Medway and in Millis. It sort of sneaks around the same way that Neponset does right through Walpole. And uh, in Franklin, there's a sculpture park that is a handicapped accessible it only takes about 10 minutes, but I'll go on multiple turns around just because it's pl plenty of fun. There's sculptures that they change the presentations for. Um, and right now there's ducklings. I, I just read there was a, a mother duck that flew into a local school into their atrium and thought it was a great place to raise ducks. <laughs> and then they were stuck and everyone was terribly worried and th just yesterday, they were able to relocate mother and babies over by the sculpture park in the pond there, and everyone seems happy. So good news. <laughs> so it's, it, you never know what you're going to see at the sculpture park. I've seen green herons hanging out there. Uh, it's, it's really a lovely spot. And this was actually, this is where the other cemented in stream was at the sculpture park, it was where they did the town swimming lessons. And they've moved it now to another location in town. But it's right behind the Franklin Police Station. There are signs on 140. And it's, a, it's just a great simple spot and handicapped accessible with limited parking, but Franklin doesn't tow cars nearly as much as Sherburn. <laughs> so probably you're fine. Uh, Delcart in Franklin is another wonderful, wonderful, several ponds, there's a dam. So part of it is, is hand, not handicapped accessible, I call it handicapped friendly, meaning it's a nice flat, wide, open spot. You're, not, you're probably not going to do well with a walker, but if you're using your hiking poles, you'll do fine. The wooded path that makes a loop all the way around the pond is a little rougher, but I have, I have friends who get out real early in the morning and they have seen otters, they've seen muskrats, they've seen all sorts of birds. Uh, there's resident swans there. This was a gift to the community from a man that owned all this property. While he was alive, he refused to let anybody there. He sold bait but he wouldn't let anybody go fishing in his ponds. And what I was told was somebody had met him and said, what would it cost to let me fish in your pond? And he said, you don't have that kind of money. <laughs> but once he died, he gave it to the town and everyone can now enjoy it. So Choate Park in Medway, another place that is not terribly far from Walpole. There's a, there's a, I would call it handicapped friendly again because it's not totally level. It's got, it's got a crushed stone path all the way around. Strollers will do fine with that, but there's a steep slope in one spot that if you're in a wheelchair, you need somebody to make sure you don't roll into the pond. But Beyond that, there's a little uh, labyrinth that I just discovered with my grandkids last week. 
just a walking in in a circle and then back out. There is a trail that goes from the pond all the way over to Medway High School, which is now on Summer Street, 126, goes right by there. And so it's about a half a mile walk over to the high school, and Medway has a trails club. Walpole has a trails club, too. That's part of what the bridge over on the town forest that you saw, the trails club was doing that in Walpole. In Medway, their trails club is building trails and boardwalks across wetland areas. Their goal is to bring a, a trail from Medway all the way up to the Holliston portion of the Upper Charles Trail. Has anyone ever been on the Upper Charles Trail? It's a beautiful, beautiful, um, so far from Hopkinton town line down through Milford downtown and then back up to the Sherburn line. It's about 10 miles. So for bikes, it's actually quite ideal. In Milford, it's all paved. In Holliston, it's all crushed down dust. So walkable one way or another, bikeable for sure. You know, it's just a, a lovely spot. So that's Medway's goal, is to connect with the Upper Charles, just making it more connective and making it so people can get around more. One of the things I really like to encourage people when they're looking for easy walks is do not overlook your local cemeteries. There are so many of them that I don't try to list them in my books. You know them better in any of your communities what's available. But um, I just found this one was a, a lovely, beautiful flaming maple. But um, the biggest th important thing to remember is that they are first places of remembrance. And so any visitation to a cemetery requires respect. And that's what, what is needed. They're limited in parking. The residents don't need parking. So that's, <laughs> yeah. they also don't need power lines. And so for views and beautiful places, you're really gonna do well to visit cemeteries. Parking is the biggest issue. Also, they very rarely will welcome dogs because people often ask me about dogs and whether they're welcome or not. Typically with cemeteries, they are not. If you're over my direction, the, uh, the Blackstone River Valley Heritage Corridor is well worth exploring. It goes all the way from Worcester in the north to Pawtucket, Rhode Island. It's a two-state heritage corridor that was founded by Congress in the 18, 1980s. And it, tra it tracks the river that had a canal that went all the way from Worcester to Pawtucket. There are sections of the canal that are still preserved. This is one of them. It's about a mile section. It's handicapped friendly. There's no steps to access it. There's a little bit of slope from the parking area, no cost, just a place to go and visit. And it's, it's really a, a treasured resource for lots of people. You could spend a whole weekend just by going to Uxbridge and exploring parts of the Blackstone Valley. And you also get beautiful views like this that if you're driving over, you would never even know. You have to get out onto the towpath and then you'll see these beautiful, beautiful stone arch bridges. Uh, Rentham is not far from Walpole either, and we're probably looking toward Walpole from this view. This was the old ski hill called um, Sweat Hill or Nuckup Hill, and the, the ski equipment is still there, but it is an amazing view. You can see all the way to Boston. I know you can see to Bo from Boston here on Route 1, but this is in Rentham and you can see all the way to Boston from there. It's a fire road. So again, it's not a paved or crushed stone, but it's actually very easy walking. It's kind of steep. So if you don't have the stamina, it might not be a good choice. But sometimes if you just take your time, the view is really worth it. I will do a lot to be able to get a view. 
and Borderlands, again, not very far from here at all in Easton. It's a state park since the 1970s. Beautiful stone building. They just had a tour of the, it's not a castle, it's about a three-story beautiful estate building. It was just open to the public in the last month or so. They do it on occasion. And then there are, I would again call handicapped friendly, wide carriage roads around the ponds that are there at uh, Borderlands. There is a small charge for parking. I believe you can get a state park membership uh, for a year and just pay one fee if you're planning on spending a lot of time at state parks. But you can get a senior membership that allows you to be there and to ride the fantastic and exactly. The state. Yep, all around the state. It's it's really it's a great resource. Oliver Ames Estate is also in Easton. It's another trustees of the reservation property. And it's it's not terribly big, but it's very, very walkable. Sidewalks or crushed stone dust roads through the property. Um, it's really, it's got water views, it's got woodland, just a lovely spot. Uh, almost directly across the street from uh, Stonehill College in Easton. And so then I, I have books <laughs> and uh, it started with a newspaper article, series of articles that I wrote for the Bellingham Bulletin. It was just kind of a lark to say, Let, let's just show people some outdoor places. A and I didn't have any place to put these newspaper articles. I had this sense that it might be something of value. So I put them up on my, my website, marjorieturner.com. And after about the 500th person came to my website saying, where's Joe's Rock? Well, it's in Rentham on Route 121, almost to Cumberland. And I said, you know, I think there's a need here. I think I might be able to do something about it. Well, I'm now working on my sixth book. <laughs> so those, those three, these are what I call the hyperlocal trail guides. That's the 36 towns, and they do list on the front of each book what towns are included. They give you maps to the trailhead. They tell you whether you can take your dog or not. They tell you, give you an address, um, search terms to find a website with more information, and then a little bit of something like something of interest that you might be able to find there. And then if you're not in any of those 36 towns and you just want to say, how do you find all these places? This was a book that I wrote saying, here's what we do when my family and I travel across the country, right nearby, throughout New England. And this past year, we went all the way up to Newfoundland and found easy walks. I have a husband who will move mountains for me if necessary, and occasionally it has been, that he is very determined to help me find easy walks. And everywhere we have been, they may be limited, but we have found places that I could enjoy being outdoors. And my, um, this was my latest one that I've just finished. This is a memoir. This is the backstory, why I do easy walks. I used to be this really healthy person, and 30 plus years ago, I found myself after surgery totally paralyzed on my right side. I have regained an, a, a measure of mobility, but hiking poles are something I bring everywhere with me. If I had stayed healthy, I probably never would have thought about easy walks. I just would have gone on my way. Sometimes we're faced with things that bring out stuff that we didn't know we had in us. These books are part of that. For me, it's a way of giving back, being able to help other people, also be able to get outdoors, not every limit, but for lots of things. I do have a Facebook group called Easy Walks Massachusetts, Rhode Island and Beyond, and you're welcome to join that. And people through, uh, through the group We've got a database, a growing database of places that people go, and I am really hard on them. 
and I say, you have to give us an address or at least a, a website. You need to tell us what the trail surfaces are like because people who walk easily don't think about it. But for people with l more limited mobility or stamina, it's really essential. And so there's a growing database of places throughout New England and beyond, places that you could go with really helpful information. I'm really grateful to all the people that are contributing to that. So this is my memoir. It's, it's meditations that I've written over the last 30 years. And what to do, learning to live with a changed life. I think a lot of us can relate with that. And then the newest book that's coming up is not published yet, but I have just started working. My collaborators, Marilyn and Dave, live over in Stoughton. And so a little farther east than I've gone so far. And they're planning to cover the next 15 towns that are listed here. Canton, Norwood, Westwood, Dedham, Stoughton, Brockton, Avon, Randolph, Holbrook, Abington, West and East Bridgewater, Bridgewater, Whitman, Hanson, and Rockland. And they're already about halfway through. I, I'm just stunned, because I can't do all that. But they're working with me, they're doing the field work, and I will use the exact same template that I've done for the other hyper-local. It'll be one more hyper-local trail guide in the Easy Walk series. Do you have any questions? I uh, haven't gotten that far, <laughs> but if you come to the Easy Walks Facebook group, there are people who have absolutely contributed things in Needham, okay. for sure, and you just have to search it and say, put in Needham or a few other search terms and see what's there. I know we have places in Needham that people have put in. Any other questions? Yes. Yeah, I definitely have questions about that, especially women, and that's just the reality of our world and walking alone. I encourage people to, rather than avoid crowds, actually look for places that are more crowded. So the more popular places that people say, oh yeah, I've been there, uh, those are the ones that you're more likely to have people around, and that's basically what's most helpful is that other people are around. So those places that are a little more off the beaten track probably wouldn't be as comfortable for you if you're by yourself. Any other questions? Well, um, I would invite you to come up, peruse the books that I have. I'd be happy to take home less. The, um, the field guy. <laughs> The, tra the hyper local trail guides are each $20. The green finding walks, wherever you are, are $10. And the memoir, My Liturgy of Easy Walks, is $20. Thank you so much for having me and for making me welcome. Thank you.